Hey guys, this isn't a video I want to have to make, but I think it's something we all need to talk about. And especially young white men, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about the fact that however big a problem guns are in the United States, this is not strictly a gun control issue. The mass murders we've seen in Ohio and Texas this weekend, but also hundreds of mass murders across the United States, in addition to ones here in Canada and New Zealand and in other European nations, done by white supremacist terrorists are something that supersedes gun control. This is about a hateful ideology. We need to take a hard stand against assault weapons and weapons of mass destruction, if you will, that can kill so many people so quickly, but that can't be the end of the discussion. It can't be, because white supremacy is driving much of this violence. And the nature, the ideology, the root of that violence is perhaps more important, I would wager, than the implements used to act on that violence. We don't need to go into every little example, but the reality is white supremacist voices, be they the president of the United States, or be they many alt-right YouTubers and alt-right media commentators, or even sometimes some relatively moderate conservative voices, use a discourse that emboldens people who are already predisposed to these sort of actions. So it's not just, you know, we're running to win elections. It's, if you don't elect people like me, we'll be invaded by foreigners flooding across your border. That this is part of a conspiracy by quote-unquote Soros-funded activists, read, Jewish people, to flood America with non-white people. Or as I've noted on this channel multiple, multiple, multiple times, alt-right voices on YouTube like Lauren Southern and Stefan Molyneux and Faith Goldie, all of whom are Canadian, we have to say this, have used this rhetoric of the Great Replacement that through higher birth rates, but especially through migration, white people are effectively being erased. And this is happening due to an international conspiracy of of secretive, again, read largely Jewish elite who are replacing white people with black people and brown people and, 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 and with the goal of erasing whiteness, of destroying European civilization or destroying countries like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, United States, who are, you know, quote unquote, rooted in that European civilization. This is not an accident. Whether it's the shooter in New Zealand who effectively targeted Muslims because of this rhetoric of invasion and replacement, or whether it was the shooter in Quebec City who targeted Muslims being deeply influenced by voices on the alt-right, both Canadian and non-Canadian, and whether it's the shooter in El Paso whose manifesto, again, they haven't confirmed it, but I'm of the belief that that manifesto is legitimate, and I don't know why they're holding on to it. That manifesto makes clear links to this discourse of invasion, of, of people flooding over the southern border to replace Americans and change America forever. And whether it's legal migration or undocumented migration, for these people, I don't think it matters. The end result for them is the marginalization of white people, and that's something that cannot stand. And if they feel that policymakers aren't doing what it takes, a.k.a banning migration, a.k.a. building walls, a.k.a. building harsher camps to, to store undocumented people, um, they will take it into their own hands with violence. And they will defend what in their minds is white civilization from these invaders, be they on ethnic grounds or religious grounds or cultural grounds or a mixture of all three. This is what it's about. And yes, they use guns. They use powerful weapons that can kill multiple people in seconds as the instruments of their white supremacist terrorism. But it's not just the guns. You know, Sean, a uh, big, you know, left tuber, makes this point. And I think he's 100% right. He made the point that, look, we got to ban guns. Of course we got to ban guns. We got to ban all sorts of guns that can do this. New Zealand's decision to take a hard stance against, you know, uh, high-powered weapons in response to the shooting in Christchurch 100% the correct move. But you can't stop there because this is about ideology. It's about white supremacist ideology. And they will kill with guns, but they could kill with knives. We've seen they can kill with cars. They could kill with jerry-rigged explosives. 
we know that 3D printer technology could potentially create guns now too. And the reality is that the guns are already in the United States. You could have a move towards a stricter gun control regime, which again needs to happen. But at the end of the day, white supremacists will still have their weapons and they will still use them to attack all those who threaten their worldview specifically people of color, Muslims, etc. That's what this is all about. And of course, this is in direct rejection of the, the, the conservative and, and right-wing talking points this time right now, whether it's saying that you can't politicize these shootings, or this is because of video games, or this is because we don't let kids pray in schools. All of those are things I've heard in the last few hours. The reality is, is that this is an act of politics. We often think of politics as... Marking your ballots, or debates, or speeches, or rallies by formal politicians. But the actions of people in their day-to-day -day lives are political. And so, in a sense, ugly as it is, these acts of white supremacist terrorism are political acts. They're political acts meant to shape discourse, meant to put pressure, meant to achieve a political objective. And as such, this is political. And mass shootings can never not be political, especially when intertwined with Islamophobia, or anti-Semitism, or white supremacy. There's no way around it. We need to have this holistic discussion. The discussion cannot just be about white supremacist terrorism or gun control. They have to be intertwined, because I think that's incredibly important. A, a discussion totally about white supremacist terrorism without talking about gun control doesn't remove a weapon from the people who want to do harm. Conversely, talking about gun control in a sanitized environment, a.k.a. all these individuals are shooting people, and we have to stop the individuals from shooting people, fails to recognize the, the deep context here. In the United States especially, but in white majority nations around the world who are increasingly feeling threatened by migrant peoples, be they legal or otherwise, are resorting to white supremacist terrorism. And we have to stop that. We have to stand up against it. Young white men like myself and like many others, we have a special responsibility to challenge this stuff. Because it's us who are doing it. It's almost all these shooters are they're almost exclusively young, white, and male. We have to do better at, in our own spaces challenging racism, challenging Islamophobia, challenging anti-Semitism. Challenging violence is any sort of legitimate path towards achieving a political objective. We have to do better. Because if we don't, people will continue to die, and white supremacy will continue to make its ignominious return to mainstream discourse.